address the same issues. Uh, from austerity measures uh, to ecologically not responsible investments and privatization of public spaces, poverty, land differentiations, corruptions, and corruption and authoritarian tendencies. Well, uh, nevertheless, the social movements articulated the protest by addressing different justifiable issues, uh, from Gezi Park to Istanbul, to new ID numbers in Bosnia and Herzegovina, corruption of political elite in Slovenia, austerity measures in Greece, and rise of prices in Bulgaria. Uh, the global financial crisis from 2007 led to abundant casualties, economic recessions that led to big losses for some countries, while wiping out a huge share of wealth and triggering a devastating sovereign debt that drove the European continent into a financial and political catastrophe. Um, a series of uh, social aftershocks followed, tensions in the labor market and in the pension system, rise of electricity, gas and heating prices, further privatization of public goods, cuts in social benefits and different kind of austerity measures that intensified the already existing clusters of poverty. Furthermore, a feeling has aroused among electorates that uh, the long-term damages to our society may claim a victim on which everything else depends, and that is democracy and representation. Uh, and why should they be blamed? Greece and Italy had to make democratic exceptions and appoint unselected technocratic elites for prime ministers, just because of the pressure of the uh, uh, outside creditors for a um, better functional economy. Uh, Habermas, for example, explains this stage as post-democratic, while saying that the technocrats has, have long since staged coup d'etat, and uh, just because of the functional markets has shifted the democratic legitimacy to, body, to bodies with uh, questionable, questionable legitimacy. Uh, also, the, the policies to tackle the crisis remain grotesquely uneven. Uh, the financiers and the bankers, together with the political elite that caused the crisis, stayed completely untouched, while the ordinary people, workers and families found themselves under pressure of unbearable measures. Uh, this resulted with social unrest and protests in countries while uh, where the policies were was set to rise. Uh, the most explicit examples, of course, can be found is in Southeastern Europe. Um, so by accepting the EU integration, Southeast Europe became part of the global world and accepted the neoliberal rules of politics dictated by the global supranational institutions. And what's more, the constitutions of these mostly post-socialist countries are a product of tradition, traditions dealing with dictators and centralized power and are burdened uh, with characteristics of strong social influences like workers' rights, rights of protest, social benefits, etc. Uh, thus, integration to the global neoliberal world becomes a long and violent road of implementing reforms. Uh, the protests and social movements that shake in Southeast Europe recently are a product of uh, this globalization <coughs> and austerity measures uh, imposed by the global economic crisis. Also, the protests have uh, drawn attention to two key problems. Uh, the first problem being the uh, destructive social consequences of the global capitalistic system because of hundreds of billion uh, euros were lost thanks to the uncontrolled uh, financial speculation. And the second one is that uh, the economic globalization um, is gradually but unavoidably undermining uh, the democracy, the legitimacy of democracy in, uh, in the Western democracies. Uh, the same goes for Macedonia. Establishing functional and competitive market on global level meant that a great deal of reforms should be undertaken, and that meant privatization of uh, big public companies, electricity, gas, communication, etc., flexible working force, reduction of workers' rights, of course, low and flat taxes, which meant uh, low taxes for the rich companies and rich people, as well as drastic reduction of the social benefits, benefits for the investments of companies, even their, their investment, even though their investments uh, endanger the environment, etc. Basically, most of the mechanisms that produce some kind of redistribution uh, of the political and financial power were eradicated. Uh, as a consequence, the Macedonian political elite became so power powerful uh, that they became unaccountable to people. Even though they won the elections, uh, uh, the last elections, it is acknowledged, fact confirmed by the reports of the European Commission and the US State Department. Uh, that the Conservative Party won the election and got their legitimacy while instrumentalizing uh, 
uh, elections and by abuse of the power of the, over institution, media, and people. Uh, while, while imposing these neoliberal measures, they created enormous class differences and consequently differences in political and financial power. Uh, therefore, the data of the World Bank says that uh, Macedonia has the biggest Gini coefficient. It's a coefficient that me measures inequality. Uh, the biggest Gini coefficients coefficient in Europe and uh, four of our SSSR republics with an index of uh, 43.2. Uh, and of course, because this system is not sustainable, uh, the discipline of the people to obey the enforced policies um, uh, is enacted through the police with brutal and authoritarian measures. Uh, it is no wonder that the police plays a crucial role in uh, today's societies and it's the first institution under reforms by the ruling elites. Nevertheless, not a lot of people know that uh, Macedonia has a continuity of protests opposing this politics. Starting from 2009, Macedonian activists started protesting against the undemocratic, unaccountable, and ecologically hazardous project of the government, Skopje 2014, which is the project with the uh, monument and, uh, and rebuilding Skopje, new Skopje, whatever. Uh, then followed the protest against police brutality in 2010 when a young boy was killed uh, by the police, special police uh, officers which were personal bodyguards of the Prime Minister. Uh, the protest uh, against the restoration of the ecologically hazardous iron foundry in Veles 2011 and continued with the protest against the rise of electricity, gas and heating prices in 2012. Uh, I will stop here now because I would also like to hear practical experience from the other countries from Southeast East, uh, from Southeastern Europe. Uh, preferably, I would like to hear more about Turkey. Uh, I don't know how you guys organized, how did you articulate your demands, what was the, the initial spark that motivated you to go on protest. And then maybe we can hear somebody from Slovenia. There's nobody from Slovenia. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, maybe somebody also from Bosnia, from Bulgaria, and also from Macedonia, for the time that we are left. Uh, okay, nice. Yeah. Well, what motivated people to, to, to protest? Uh, it was my two last group of Yeah. Actually, it was something like people who were already um, unconsciously waiting a, a, a moment to go to go out and to, to, to protest something because all those young people who were on the streets, 90% of them, of course, it's not a figure which is scientifically proved, but this is my guess. 90% of them were. Uh, it was the first time for them to protest something on the street. Um, are you seriously recording this? Yes, I am. I could be impressed. <laughs> Uh, well, what motivated them? They just basically wanted the, 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 the government not to manipulate them anymore. Because there are many different groups, there are many different types of natural needs, laws, and policies that some part of young people are not really comfortable. And they feel like their voices are not heard. So it was a way to make themselves to be hurt by, by the government gesture. So mostly it was a problem of democracy and reviving the public spaces where young people can... Well, I would say hurt. since uh, 1923, which was the foundation of the Republic, we have democracy issues. Mm -hmm. So it's not something new. But let's say the level is, is, is higher than in the last decade. Somebody else from some other country, maybe? Oh, okay. Um, I mean, we can know that not only from public protests, but this one for the um, ID number was the biggest one. Uh, the issue was that the uh, representative politicians and federation of those in the media, they wanted to have that. ID numbers were here from the state level, and from the public sector side, they already had the law, so the children born in the public sector side had the ID law. And they could, couldn't make these agreements on the state level. So we had this uh, case, Dalmina. She was really sick. She 
take the golf club garage in Germany? And she couldn't. 